Hey guys, welcome to Programming Knowledge. In this video, we'll be looking at this template code which Codeblocks had provided us while creating a project and also we'll be learning how to perform simple output in C++. Let's get started. So the first line here says hash include iostream. Hash include is known as a preprocessor directive. So hash include is used to load files which are already present in the compiler. C++ compiler comes with many files which are which have predefined functions to help us code with. So Hyostream is one of them and by using this preprocessor directive, by using hash include, we are actually invoking this file from the compiler. So without this file, you cannot perform any input or output in C++. There are many other header files we will be coming across in the run. But for now, let us explore Iostream. Iostream contains all the functions which we need to perform console input or output. So Iostream basically stands for input and output stream. So by the name itself, we can say every, every function we need for performing input or output is present in Iostream. Next is this line, it says using namespace std. So std is known as a scope. Scope we can understand like a region. So every function inside this Iostream works only in a certain region. So for now, we are not going to deal with any other scopes rather than the standard scope but just for information there are other scopes also that we will be learning when we are pretty good in C++ that comes at an advanced stage but for now we can see uh, only use the standard scope standard scope is nothing but the console so if, if I just remove this line you will be seeing that uh, this all these functions go out of the scope so now if I build and run this by hitting F9 so now you can see that it shows an error. What does the error say? It says that cout was not declared in the scope. This just means that this line or this particular function cannot be executed because it is out of the scope. Scope is nothing but the standard scope. The way we define standard scope is by using the scope resolution operation. Scope resolution is nothing but you just write the scope and then the function and in, in between the scope and the function you just specify the scope by putting two colons. So this is how you specify the scope. So if I now execute it, uh, I, yeah, I'm getting another error because this endl, this endl is also uh, from the IO stream. So it does not have that uh, scope. So I need to provide the scope for this also. Now if I build and run this, I'll be getting the output. So here you can see, welcome to programming knowledge. So that is the importance of scope. Then why do we need using namespace also? Well, you cannot do this for every statement, right? It is going to be a lot of, uh, it is going to take a lot of uh, time to actually do this. And sometimes we may also forget to do this. So suppose I'm writing 10 cout statements. This is a cout statement. Cout is nothing but the output statement. This one, what I'm printing onto the console is not a cout statement. So this statement, if I write in 10 times, I need to specify the scope 10 times. So every time I use this function or not only this function, if I use any function from this Iostream library, I need to actually specify this particular standard scope. That is why to avoid that C++ provides a way to globalize that by using the namespace statement. So by writing using namespace std, you are actually globalizing this statement and it is going to take care of any other standard. So you, if you don't write the standard, it is automatically taken care of by the compiler because it just encountered this line. This line just means that wherever standard scope needs to be used, you just use it. That is what this line means. So the next line says int main. Main is actually a function. Every program has a main function. Main is like a triggering function. So every program has this. Without main, there is no program because all the execution starts only from the main function. So suppose you write a hundred file program or even say thousand file program, they may contain n number of functions, but there is only one main function and that main function cannot be replaced. And without this main function, this program is not going to run. So if I simply just type a capital M over here, well, C++ is case sensitive. So capital M main and a small m main are different. So now if I try to build and run this, I'll be getting an error. It says undefined reference to this win main at the rate 16. 
This is actually something which is inside the compiler. It is a compiler issue. That is because it did not encounter the main function. So only if you write the main function, you are going to execute it. So first thing any C++ program looks for is this for this function. It needs to be main and with a small m and it should be empty. You can actually put void over here. So all, that also doesn't matter, but just it just makes it look complex. So it's best to leave it empty. So if you put like this and then it has to be int, the reason we'll be looking at it later. And the meaning of this int and this return zero will be understanding only when we are dealing with functions. So for now we can ignore them. So just remember that you need to write int main. Any other main doesn't work. So suppose if I put void or some int, uh, let's say float main, all these are not going to work. Only int main is going to work. And for now you can actually remove this return zero. So without this also the program is going to run and it's going to give you the output. Uh, there's a lot of significance for the return statement. And we'll be discussing about that when we're discussing functions. So this, as I told you, is the cout statement just stands for the console output. So cout stands for console output and whatever you write here goes to the screen. And uh, this operator is known as the stream operator. Stream operators are very important. We will be looking at it while we are dealing with other streams also like a uh, file stream or something like that. But for now, while we are using the IO stream, that is the console stream, we need to have these two functions in a pair. So uh, the, this, is a, this is the stream function, that is the cout and this is the stream operator and this is the stream operand. Uh, this is a specific statement, but technically in computer programming, this is called a string. String is nothing but a collection of characters. It is called a string. So that is a data type. We'll be talking about that in the next video. So for now, this is what the program was. And yeah, I forgot to tell you this one. Uh, this is actually appending another function in the same cout. So cout actually operates on only one operand. So if you want to operate on multiple operands, you need to separate that with this stream operator. So see, this is a string and this is a function. Endl is actually a function. So uh, the way it works is it is going to first do the it is going to first operate on this and then it is going to encounter this and then it is like uh, adding another C out statement that's it. So if I just put a semicolon here and then put a C out over here it is going to work the same way. Guess that it is not to get you confused. These are two separate search statements. If you are wanting to uh, put multiple statements in a single statement then that is how th this is how you do it. You just uh, put an operator in between and then put the next operand over here. And this semicolon is very important. You might have noticed a semicolon over here also. Semicolon is known as a terminator. So in C++, you can write multiple commands in the same line. So terminator, what it does is, it is going to separate each and every command so that the compiler knows what command to execute after executing the previous command. So that is why we use a terminator. It is very important. So if you remove this, it is going to result to an error because it doesn't terminate and it says expected this semicolon before this particular token that this one. It expected a end of a statement before this one. That is why we put a semicolon. And uh, this curly braces just signify the body of the main. So whatever code you write, you are going to write between these two braces for some time until we are fam we get familiar with functions. So once we are familiar with functions, we will be writing multiple functions and we will be invoking the functions within this main method. We will be looking at that later, but for now, let us talk about the output. So we all know how to put output, right? This is how we put output. We just put them inside uh, two double quotes. Well, this is a string. Uh, we can also put numbers also. So for numbers, you can either put it as a string. So you can put something like this, right? And then uh, execute it, you'll be getting five over there. Or uh, integers are separate in programming. So even if you put a five like this, you're di directly going to see five in the console. So here you can see. And now comes the major difference. If I put five plus five over here, and then execute it, I'll be getting 10 over here. That is the value of five plus five. But if I just enclose it within a quote, uh, within a double quote, what will I get? I'll just get the same thing. I'll just get 5 plus 5 because this is treated as a constant string. What this double quote means is that 
whatever you put inside this double quotes is just going to be replicated as it is on the screen. And if you don't put a double quote, it has to be either a memory location or some operand. So memory location or variable will be looking at the next video while we are discussing input. But for now, and the output, we need, we need not bother about memory location. Let's just talk about the integer part of it. So if I just put, uh, let's say, uh, let's try another one. Let's put something like this, 5 plus 5. Let us try this one. These are two different strings and I have, you know, used a plus operator between these things. So what we expect is actually 10, but uh, let us now execute this and look at that. It says invalid operands of types const char and const char. What this means is you cannot add two constant characters or constant string. What const char and this square bracket is, square bracket is actually called an array. Okay, So we'll be looking all of these things when we are discussing data types. But for now, we can uh, you can uh, understand that you cannot add two strings. You can only add two numbers. So if I just put 5 plus 5, I'm going to get the answer. So here, so th this is same with real numbers also. You can even put 0.5 plus uh, 1.5. So that makes it 2. So here you will be getting 2.2 over here. So, and you can even work with decimals also. Even if I put 1.45, you're going to get the answer. So you will be getting 1.95. So, that is the dif major difference between strings and numbers. So if you are working with numbers, you can directly add them. You can multiply, you can divide. Multiply here is the star symbol, which you will be finding on the eight, on uh, number eight on your keyboard. So that is the multiply symbol and then divide is the normal forward slash symbol. So this is the divide and multiply. And uh, there is another one also, there is another operator that is called the modulo operator. What this does is it gives, sorry, it gives the remainder of the two numbers, right? So what what it means is if you just put five modulo two, what this does is it gives a remainder. So if you divide five with two, what is the remainder you are going to get? You are going to get one because uh, well it is uh, two into two plus one, which makes it five, right? So this is the operation. So that is why, so two goes two times in five and then one is the remainder. That is why you're getting one. So you can verify that. You can do that by simply putting two in, uh, well, you can directly put five more two, right? You're going to get one over here. So if I just run this, here you can see one. There are many other operators. We'll be looking at them later. When these are the, uh, this is how you can perform output in C++. Well, there are other things also, like uh, instead of using this, we have something called escape sequences. Let me talk about them quickly. It is escape sequences. What these are uh, is basically, there are some keyboard strokes which we cannot perform during runtime, right? So suppose we wanted to perform a backspace during the runtime. It is not possible. I'm talking about the runtime. So suppose I wanted to hello world over here, suppose. And then I wanted to perform a backspace for this extra space I have provided over here. I cannot do that in the runtime, right? Now I can do anything. I can even put this, I can change this character, I can do anything I want. But what about during the runtime? For that, there are some special keystrokes that are uh, actually treated as escape sequences. So the way we define escape sequences are, you actually put a backslash and then a special character. So here there will be a special character. And then this is going to actually give you a special meaning. So this is going to execute that particular keystroke. So there's there are some of the escape sequences like uh, slash a it's going to ring you a bell so you might have noticed that uh, there will be a, a notification bell that will come and then uh, there is a slash b which is for backspace and then uh, slash t and slash n we will be using these things more often slash t is for a horizontal tab and then slash n is for a new line wait 
we did see this one somewhere, right? This one. So indel is actually a function. There is actually a significant difference between using slash and an indel. So I'm just going to delete these things. Let us first try slash a. So first slash a, I'm going to run this. So you might have heard that uh, sound, right? That bell sound. That is the function of slash a. So now let us look at slash t. That is just it's going to put a tab. So let me put a tab between hello and world. So if I put slash t over here and then execute it, here you will be seeing hello and then a, this space and then a world. So this is what the function of slash t. And then slash n is what going to do the same thing what this function does. It is just going to put the contents in the next line. So if I just execute it, there will be a new line. So hello and then a new line and then the word. So that is the function of slash n. So that is all for this output session. In the next time, in the next video, we'll be looking at input in C++. Right? So thanks for watching this video. I'll be meeting you with the next video with input in C++.